Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is another Sunday night live from the Podding Shed here at Bench Grove Podcast HQ. It is the 18th of September 2022. Today, I'm asking the question, are you saving any seeds? But that will be coming up in just a little moment. First of all, let's find out if anybody is actually watching. And straight away, yes, we've got Bally Cillian and Lock McMillan. Good evening all. Looking forward to the show tonight. Lovely to see him. Looking forward to the show as well. Adrian has joined. Good evening to you. We've got Oracle out there saying hello to the gang. Good evening to you. Do, 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 do. Um, who else? Are we? Survey Stream is saying good evening, Veg Grow It, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Turbo Stream, Bally, Oracle, or, uh, Adrian, send a letter to them. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Digwell Greenfingers, hi all, early for a change, too nippy to be outside in shorts and t-shirt, so I finished quickly today. It suddenly has dropped, hasn't it? We, this weekend, I got up early to pop out yesterday morning, and I was surprised just how fresh it felt, but it was nice at the same time. Hargrave Gask, evening all, hope you've had a great week. Uh, good evening to you, hope you've had a great week too. Uh, Jenny Hallett, hello everyone, hope you are well, good evening to you. Idaho Garden Girl, all the way from Idaho, America, has joined and saying hello. Hello, Richard Digwell, Hargrave Gas, Adrian Ballycillian, and Turbo Stream. Uh, my dad is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Graham Arnold is out there. Good evening to you. Richard Golden has joined. Good evening to you. Dear Stuart Jackson, evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Hope everyone is well. Good evening to you. Uh, Anna Jones has joined. Good evening to you. And have we got anybody that I have missed? I cannot see anybody else, but if I have, apologies for that. Keep making your comments at the bottom of the screen. But also, if you want to call in, the phone line is open. If I just bring the number up, uh, that one there. There we go. If you want to call in, the number is just up here, 07307 135 174. And of course, you'll be able to zap in once I pop the link up in the comments if you want to zap in as well. Uh, that is going right up now. Right. So uh, just quickly, I've just seen we've got somebody in the Facebook group looking forward to the show. Lovely. Thank you for joining us. Um, unfortunately, using the Facebook group, we don't always see who is there. So if you just leave your name on the end, then we can know I can address you personally. It's just the way Facebook works sometimes. And of course, Ian McGorgon, Evening Richard and all, or is it McCraggan? I always get it wrong. Apologies for that. Um, Bally City is saying, just home, was warm at a plot today, but regular dizzle, drizzle showers in Belfast. It's been weird. It's been very weird, the weather this weekend. In fact, this whole week, we've had some really cold, fresh mornings, but the sun has been shining and it's in the sun. It's been warm. But when we get a breeze, it's been quite chilly. But then come the evening, the temperature does drop quite quickly. I've even got a bit of a cold, I believe. So uh, I think the, the cold weather is certainly here. But that's a good thing, I feel. I'm glad in some ways summer's over with and we can get on with the, the autumn work when I feel we are more productive. Summer, excuse me, summer just feels like we spend all our time watering. Anyway, so today I am asking the question, what seeds are you saving? This is a question that uh, has came up from many, many times. Uh, from from various listeners and what viewers and they're trying to save seeds for the future this is something i think is quite important i tend not to save seeds and i'll tell you why it's because i've got boxes i've got six more of these size boxes full of seeds plus various other boxes and containers full of seeds. I've got way too many seed packets. So I don't tend to worry too much about saving seeds. The only seeds I am sort of saving is if you look at the thumbnail for this post, you'll see there's some poppy seeds that are drying out in the greenhouse. I'm saving those seeds and going to retry those. But other than that, I'm not so much saving seeds, but I am quite tempted to, to do it in future years. As I say, the only reason I'm not saving seeds, I've got too many seeds. But 
if we were looking at, especially if we're trying to be self-sufficient, if we're looking at this years down the line, we can be saving seed in order to make our seeds more cost effective, save some money and also save the best seeds. So the, the plants that have done best in your garden, you save those seeds and you hope some of that genetics has been passed on and that those seeds that you, the plants that you grow following years are going to be better and better. So let's quickly just go back to the comments. Jenny is saying it was below five in her garden last night. It certainly has dropped. It really has dropped. Uh, I really do need to get myself a uh, thermometer to monitor the temperature here again so I can just see how cold it gets. But I've noticed it's dropped. Uh, it is Joe in the Facebook group. Lovely to see you, Joe. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, Grow Veg UK has joined. Hello, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Veg Grow Army. I've, I've been thinking about that name all week, funny enough. Uh, Jenny says, when it comes up, I'm saving all my beans, some heritage tomatoes that, that were not cheap, some annual flowers and damsons. Now, that, that's a very good point because heritage tomatoes or heritage plants in general, her, heritage veg, is something that we do need to save the seeds on. And effectively we all become seed banks if we're saving those seeds but i do worry sometimes that some of the genetics might be lost as we grow them on and on but i also think that is a good way of course if we're going back from some of those really old varieties we're growing those we're saving those seeds we we've got the the chance that we've got those seeds ready for future use so when we lose some varieties or uh, which has been known to happen. Some varieties or certain plants have gone extinct by saving the seeds we try and keep growing them. You know, unless we've got something like what they have at Waker's Palace, where the huge fridges or freezers that store the seed, seeds in ideal temperatures in order to make these seeds viable for up to 100 years. The best way I feel to keep seeds going is to keep growing them and keep them producing. Ian Bono says, evening army. Hope everyone is okay. Lovely to see you. Turbo Stream says it's quite chilly on the plot this lunchtime at Birmingham. Uh, Bally Cillian, so far, sweet pea, marigold, poppy, French beans and runner beans, but we'll still buy fresh as a backup. Now, I find that interesting. I do find that interesting, Bally Cillian's comment there, because there he is saving all those seeds that obviously he plans to grow next year, but still wants to buy fresh as a backup. Um, is that, this is a question for you, Bally Cillian, the fact that you want to buy fresh as a backup, is that because you're unsure of how viable your seeds are? Um, are or are you certain that your seeds won't grow? It, the question I'm going to throw out there to get everyone else to try and answer. Idaho says it's been much cooler. Hard to believe that two weeks ago we had temps over 101 degrees F, 38 degrees C. Well, yeah. And that's in Idaho. So, yeah, it is amazing to think we had all that hot weather and now the temperature has dropped. Ian McGorgon is McCraggan. Sorry, evening all. I've already said that. I can't remember. Uh, Turbo Stream. I always save the parsnip seeds from the allotment. That way I know they are fresh for sowing the next spring. Good idea. Good idea indeed. How do you go about saving those seeds, though, Turbo Stream? Let us know. Idaho says, I usually save beans and lettuce. This year I'm saving parsnip, rhubarb and parsley so far. Rhubarb, that's quite an interesting one to save for seeds because obviously usually we don't want our rhubarb to go to seed. So interesting that you are saving a seed from that. But I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Jenny says, I've joined the Heritage Seed Society, which is obviously the society for saving all these seeds. I believe the, the idea being, is, as I said earlier, you're growing these plants for seeds in order to keep the, the viability, the seeds going for future. I think it's a brilliant idea. Absolutely brilliant idea, I've got to say. Oracle says, seeds were cheap and there was no point. But with the way the UK cut out Northern Ireland, every seed is a prisoner. Yeah. Uh, I, I know. I, I do agree. Or, Oracle is actually, in the, you guys in Northern Ireland, is actually probably the great example why seed, save, seed saving can be so important. If your supply chain just suddenly gets cut off. I was also thinking back to the COVID when we went into lockdown and seeds weren't so easily available. Um, saving your own seed just guarantees you're going to have seeds for next year. 
I keep saying I'm going to try and save some seeds and I never get quite get round to it. Uh, Digwell says to Ida, it's barbecue weather. In, <laughs> indeed it is. Turbo stream. I always save broad bean seeds, but now I'm in a supporters club. I hopefully won't need to save any other seeds. I am sending out broad beans. I can't remember if they're coming out in October or November, but they are. How have I done them? I can't remember. They are coming out in the supporters club. For members of a supporters club, uh, it, quickly run through that i i have run a supporters club for the podcast and the live show um, members of that they each month they get a few packets of seeds sent to their door along with a newsletter and exclusive behind the scenes podcasts and i'm thinking of doing exclusive live streams for members as well if i can find the time um more details on that at eventgrowpodcast.co.uk Hargrave Gas yes, says, I'm saving chili and pepper seeds plus beans, marigolds, which I use for companion planting, hollyhocks and sunflowers. Fantastic. Fantastic. Again, let me know your process for how you go about saving these seeds. Um, this is something I'm interested in and I've, I've saved seeds in the past. As I said, I'm not so much this year because I've got so many packets of seeds that I want to use up. But it's something I want to do in the future. Um, <laughs> Digwell says I eat all my parsnips so they are no for me fair point fair point um, Jay Hazel lovely to see you thank you for joining in we got down to one degree Celsius in the Canadian prairies I'm saving zinnia sunflower calendula cosmos sweet peas squash corn parsnip carrot beans tomatoes and peppers thank you so much for joining and i've got to say you are in one of my favorite company, countries i love canada i've got family out there by far my favorite country but yeah um zinnia i can't remember uh, sunflowers claimed you all good good seeds to save with how are you going about seed saving the next question uh bally Cillian, the main reason is over winter with a dark night sometimes i take my eye off the ball and can lose the saved seeds good good point and uh, for that i asked bally Seed. he said he was saving all these seeds but was buying fresh next year and as he says it's because he can lose some of his saved seeds fair point fair point this is what i want to know uh margaret ian is your pronounced mccorfin trying to help richard remember <laughs> uh yeah i could do all the help sometimes i should know it. i've known ian for years um well, i've yet to meet him in person i've got to uh, ian email me and we'll arrange a meetup turbo stream to save parsnip seeds leave a plant to flower and let the few pods go dry and cut the heads off and let the seeds drop into a bag they are very light so they will blow away in the wind so yeah parsnips are biannuals so they do tend to flower in their second year but as turbo stream says he just lets them flower let a few pods go dry and then cut the heads off and allow the seeds to drop into a bag there's somebody who is doing it so uh, great idea now something that i did last year i planted out some mustard and the variety was kamatsuta something like that it's quite it's a uh japanese mustard absolutely delicious tasty plant but i let a couple of the plants just go to seed i didn't cut them down or anything but i left them to go to seed and now this year that entire bed has just had all this mustard grow without me having to do anything it's been fantastic because we have got a lot of mustard from it which we have eaten and used a lot of and it is absolutely delicious Best of all, that bed has, because it's so thick with this mustard, it's not needed any weeding or anything. And effectively, a seed saving, isn't it? I've just let it do its own thing. And a lot of it has also been used to feed the chickens because, after all, they need feeding as well. Jenny says, I am so happy. I've been on the list forever. I've been given the opportunity to grow and share my knowledge at Harry Kishma Farm, 100% organic, friendly community, and Keldung on Tap, a community garden fantastic jenny fantastic love to let us know how you get on with that too uh she also says we share the harvest and welcome that to and welcome to spend time there as well fantastic fantastic uh oracle says the man who should be saving seeds is mr jackson what a way to show kids how one plant can keep going it's a good idea that's a very good point i have to say 
Uh, Idaho says, I neglectfully allowed rhubarb to go to seed. I collected some of the seeds. Actually, I just noticed that some of the rhubarb seeds that dropped to the ground have already germinated on our seedlings. That's sometimes the best way, isn't it, when things just pop up. I've always said some of the best weeds would be ones that are edible but just pop up. Stuart says, I save lupins every year and runner beans as the runner beans were my dad's seeds and the lupin seeds I use to sell in my seeds. They have already sown. So there you go. Uh, Stuart is saving a lupin seeds. Um, oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what else? What else? Jenny says, sunflower seeds saved on heads as I make bird feeding reefs at Christmas. Uh, yeah. A good idea. That's an easy way to save, and you get a lot of sunflower seeds from one plant. Digwell, if anyone in Northern Ireland wants me to buy and send seeds to you, let me know. Pay via PayPal, you pay at your risk, but I have none impounded so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, we all, we, we all know it's risky because of EU rules sending seeds to Northern Ireland, um, which I'm still cautious about but uh I'm, I'm working on something nick and that uh, evening richard and all it's been a lovely warm day here it was getting very hot in the veg plot digging fantastic lovely to see you nicola i've um, got some lovely photos from you coming up in just a moment most of my april sown parsnips run to flower this year so i'm glad i sowed a short row in june hopefully christmas dinner is saved yeah this year has been really challenging with that warm weather and, and uh things like parsnips etc etc so and on that note uh, jay hazel says i would recommend parsnips to try i just leave a couple in the ground or move them where i want the flowers they grow four feet here in dappled shade their second year and they have beautiful flowers that's exactly right i used to when i had less land what i used to do is grow my carrots in a pot in a big tub and i would just let a couple of carrots go to seed and then sell seed in that pot in that tub i might actually start implementing again just so then i can guarantee that those carrots are just going to grow where they are easy way to seed save as well and doesn't take up much space and doesn't necessarily need much more work for myself Stu also says i saved one garlic for, for the following year i'm going to save tomato and french beans this year too i'm looking at some of my french beans to save funny enough and in the past i've always saved my garlic but last couple of years i've noticed they've been getting a bit smaller so i'm starting fresh this year with my garlic i've also been losing track with rich varieties so this coming year what i used to do whenever i harvest my garlic i usually plant them in rows so i know what is where i save the biggest bulbs and replant that that year uh, this this year i didn't do that i'm starting fresh except for my elephant garlic which elephant garlic is just getting bigger and bigger every year love elephant garlic absolutely fantastic one to grow um uh, Bally Cillian says it's important to remember that not all seeds can be saved. F1, for example, may not stay true to a parent plant, which is a very, very true. So F1, F1 uh, varieties are basically got two different types of parents. So I'm going to use an analogy that is explained to me of let's say the parent is a horse and a donkey and you would breed the horse and the donkey together and you would get an ass. Um, but if you breed two asses together, you either get a horse or a donkey or something that's not quite the same as the or more closer to it related to either a horse or a donkey. Not quite the same. So the only way to get an ass was to breed, breed a horse and a donkey. Does that make sense? And that is how F1 varieties, the F1 being the, the, uh, the ass. You can still save seed. You just may not get it true to what it was originally. Um, Right, Ian, Ian is going, a meetup would be good. To say my surname, McCaghan. Right, McCaghan. Have I got that right? Apologies. I, I, I'm always worried I get people's names wrong. Stuart, the last two weeks, we have also, we have been saving seeds as part of our gardening forest school lessons. So I learned loads as well as teaching the children. Fantastic. Fantastic. How did you go about saving these seeds? It's the, the big question now. Uh, Turbo Street, my neighbours 
had some hardy geraniums in his front garden. They self sow it in my bark chippings, so I pot them up and have planted a few on my allotment flower bed. So a lot of us at the moment are talking about um, the fact that we, we, we get volunteer plants, these seeds that have grown from parent plants, and we're saving those, which is a great idea. I really want to find out about seed saving. Uh, we, we've gone through what plants you are saving, what seeds you are saving. I want to know how you are doing it. Uh, Digwell says Northern Ireland customs don't seem to bother with private mail. Over a dozen packets sent so far. Yeah, uh, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I'm not quite private, but not business difficult um, to work it out. out. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Digwell says, here's my list so far. Deal up Bellotti seeds, sea potatoes, harder to find tomato seeds like pink orchid and Brad's atomic grape marrow next week after I cook them. Now, members of my supporters club, we were actually sent a lot of marrow seeds from Digwell, which we sent out earlier this year. So if anybody so knows, how did you get on with them? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, again, a lot of these dill, bolotti, seed potatoes. How do you go about storing and saving these seeds? This is what I want to get uh, down to. Now, I'll share my experience. When I have saved seeds, particularly beans and peas, I always find beans and peas are some of the easiest to do this with. What I like to do is I just let the pods go really dry on the plant, you know, to the point that the pod, pods are almost splitting apart. Then I will just remove those pods and pot them in a greenhouse um, just to dry out a little bit longer. And then I'll break down the pods and try and remove the seeds. And then I'll pot those seeds in a, a brown envelope, hang them up again to dry before potting them into my fridge I keep down here, uh, which is a fridge. It's not turned on or anything, but because it's in this shed, it just maintains that temperature really easily. And it's a great way to store seeds. So that's peas and beans. If you have never saved seeds before, they're probably one of the um, easiest plants to start saving seeds. Uh, Digwell says, I did an explanation of F1, F2, 3, 4, 5, etc. on my tomato seed saving video. Yep. Check that out on Digwell's YouTube channel. Uh, good video if you do want to ex explain. Uh, Ian says, I never worry about people getting my name wrong. It happens all the time. Yeah, I know that feeling. Jenny says, I wash the tomato seeds in the normal ways. Normal way. So tomato seeds. So let's start with that one because that can be one that is quite a bit different from all the others. What we usually do with tomato seeds that we want to save is Obviously, we cut the tomato in half and we scoop the seeds from the inside out into a jam jar and then add water to cover those seeds in the jam jar. Probably wash them a few times as well. Eventually, because uh, tomato seeds have got that jelly coating, we want to leave it in that water so that that jelly coating ferments off. And normally you see mould at the top of the water when you know it's ready. At that point, we drain those tomato seeds off through a sieve and then, again, lay them out on some tissue paper to dry. And there, in theory, we have seeds that are ready for drying. Uh, beans, etc., all dry on the plant. Like I said, flower seeds, heads chopped and popped in a paper bag to continue drying. I then store in old envelopes. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Idaho, I grew 12 different pumpkin varieties this year. Wanted to determine which other tasted and longest storage ability. Can't save seeds from any of those this year, but will next year's only plant the best variety? In fact, pumpkins are probably an even easier one to save the seed off. Um, you just simply scoop out the seeds, wash them and dry them, store them. Easy as that. Just got to make sure they are completely completely dry before you store them otherwise they uh they could lead to rotting or uh mildew inside storage we don't want that don't want that at all sea potatoes leave dirty but allowed to dry wrapping kitchen kitchen tissue label then keep in a two to five degrees fridge there we go there we go i've i've never really thought about saving saving sea potatoes in the past but it's a good idea. 
But does that apply for your first earlies? And how do you manage to keep your first early potatoes for so long? Because obviously we're harvesting them June, July time, and then we're not planting them till March the following year. How do you go about storing your seed, your uh, first early seed potatoes? Um, Bally Cillian says, nothing to do with tonight's topic, but today I took geranium, lavender and curry plant cuttings to save me buying plants next year. Fantastic. That's something we, we, we will have to talk about at some point as well. Uh, Jay Hazel, that's such a great thing to try, Idaho. I've always wondered which would last the longest. Yeah, um, I'm planning. I've got a butternut squash, which popped up in my garden from nowhere. I don't know how it grew there. It just appeared. I'm saving the seeds for that because it's one of the best butternut squashes I've ever grown. It's fantastic. It's a real big, nice plant. It's where the chickens were, so it's something to do with the chicken seeds. Uh, Digwell says, I ferment the tomato seeds too. Excellent. Uh, and Nicola, I took my broad bean plants down. The ones I left, I forgot to take indoors to dry store. Anyway, mice got most of them, but a few had started growing in a wood chip path. Excuse me. So they have been transplanted. Again, that's where a fridge, storing your seeds in a fridge, comes into real handy because mice can't get into a fridge very easily so uh, that's another reason i keep my seeds in a fridge in a shed uh jenny says i also wash the damsons then drain and leave for a day or two then sow straight away to germinate next spring i try and copy mother nature's process from eaten rained on and buried yeah i think there's a lot to be said for mother nature's rest uh, method i'm looking at getting some more session pepper seeds for that very reason and trying to sow them out outside leave them outside over winter for them to germinate i've got a session pepper tree which is absolutely beautiful but i want more and it says i just scoop the tomato seeds and the gelatinous coating onto a piece of kitchen roll and leave it to dry then i plant the whole thing like a seed mat no sieving or washing works a treat well i've never heard of that way before so that's quite quite ingenious i like the uh, whole seed um seed mat thing that is a good idea too um and idaho saying to jay hazel most seed companies are west coast or east coast or prairies i want varieties that do the best for me indeed that's the advantage with seed saving is that we can get seeds that have learned how best to grow in our own gardens our own microclimates our own environments and our own skills so by selecting the plants that did the best and saving the seeds from that, we're always going to get the best for our gardens. There's something I'm very, very, very fond of saving seeds of is my chili plants, because I do love growing chilies and they get better and better. And again, there is something that I like. I can use the actual the actual vegetable itself the the fleshy material a bit like tomatoes a bit like pumpkins but still save the seeds so nothing gets wasted and again that's as simple as you you really want chilies or peppers when they are really really ripe for it to be the most viable seeds uh, and when i say really really ripe they are dry and again you chop them chop them out scoop the seeds dry the seeds and wham bam you have got your seeds ready to go um so yeah just a few ideas we have there uh, i asked digro earlier about first earlies they keep for a year i still have some conda from september 21 in the fridge in fact i've just planted some to grow over the winter to get head start next year um i like this idea i like this idea a lot digro i do find seed potatoes do seem to cost a fortune but there must be a way of making them last. So I'm liking this a lot. I think I'm going to give that a try next year. You've persuaded me to give it a try. So, so far, we've got a good list of what plants we are saving seeds from. Has anybody got their favourite plant this year that they are really saving the seed from? Um, 
Buckley Seeding has made a very good point. It's something I've always noticed. Self-seeded volunteer plants are always better. I totally agree. Same as self-seeded volunteer potatoes. They always seem to grow better than what we actually grow. And I think that's because it's mother nature. They've grown at the best time that they feel is suitable for them. They haven't got to be transplanted. They just grow in it where they are. So, yeah, I do agree with that. Volunteer plants are a really good way forward. Um, I popped a photo on the group. I've washed my melon seeds, which are drying nicely. Lots more melons for next year. So I'm trying to, I did see that photo, and I don't think it's in the group photos tonight, um, which I'm kicking myself about because I had a good joke lined up for it, but that, that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, melon seeds. Melon seeds, that's a good one. Melons, are, I find, can be quite tricky to really grow and get germinated. So by getting seeds that you have saved yourself, going to be better at growing at your own garden. Uh, Jenny says, I 100% agree with Bally Cillian. Tree spinach is always better when self-sown. I do like tree spinach. Absolutely love tree spinach. Uh, and Idaho says to dig out, I want to try and save seed potatoes this year. I'm going to try and do it myself as well. Um, probably going to need a second fridge to keep the wife happy. But I think I can do that. I've got enough fridges. I'm sure I can do that. Um, Digwell says, rattle the chilies. If they sound like maracas, then they are ready to open. Yes. I mean, the good thing is with chilies, you can actually dry them off the plant as well. Um, <laughs> um, just Sorry, I just got distracted by this comment. Richard, I do hope you were not going to comment about my melons. I mean, that was the joke I had lined up. Apologies. Yes, yes. Uh, rattle the chilies. Yeah, the good thing with chilies, they can dry off the plant and when they rattle yeah and just break them down again that's what i love about those plants that we can actually actually get our get get food from them but still save the seeds i'm kind of inspired again to save i've got so many seeds that I, I don't really want to save seeds but i've kind of want to at the same time Stuart Jackson, the children collected seeds they could find around the school. We have sown some of the seeds, so see if they could grow. But now we have a free veggie pod. We will be sowing seeds every month. So watch this space. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, using a veggie pod as a growing area is a good idea. Uh, Digwell says, I brought a second-hand beer fridge. Yeah, yeah, a good idea, good idea. At this point, I just want to ask everybody, if they are enjoying this as live stream, please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a follow. Please do give us a subscribe. And don't forget to click the notifications to know when we go live, even though we go live at the same time every month, every week, sorry, it's Sunday at six every week, both on Facebook and YouTube. Um, always it goes down well. Plus, it, giving us a like, helps get the uh, algorithms working so more people can find in and join in this live stream. So, uh, yeah, I do actually have, I'm going to have a quick break for a second because we've been very kindly sent a photo. It's completely, uh, not a photo, sorry, a video, completely off topic, but it's big in the news at the moment. So I'm going to quickly play this video to give me a, a chance to have a bit of coffee. Um, well, I want to thank Philly for this video, for this video. So I'm going to pull this up quickly now.
How lovely was that? Thank you so much for that, Philly. Gave me the chance to have a, a quick swig of my coffee, but also a lovely, lovely tribute to the Queen, who, of course, um, passed away this last week and is a funeral tomorrow, which gives us uh, a day off from work tomorrow. I'm on call, so it doesn't quite happen, although a lot of our customers are closed as well. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, I, I don't want don't want to dwell on it because it's covered so much on use, but I do think it's an absolutely lovely tribute. Thank you so much. Uh, and I can see that Jenny says, "Bless her beautiful heart." Thank you for sharing. Um, and dig well. Uh, a fitting tribute, Richard Philly. Uh, I worked for Her Majesty for twenty four years. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Right, where were we? Uh, Jenny says, if anyone who would like some of her melon seeds, let her know. <laughs> um, the melon jokes are just bouncing and bouncing, aren't they? Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. Melons are bouncing. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, Bally soon says to Stuart, the knowledge the kids are allowed will stay with them all their lives. Indeed, indeed. Anna Jones says, I always save any green potatoes as next year's seeds better than throwing them out. That's a good idea. Never thought about that. That is a very good idea, I have to say. I have to say, in, indeed, um, that is a really good idea. Uh, and reduces waste, so even better. Stuart says, we are very lucky now having two veggie pods. The second one was donated to school for free. So all the seeds we will get a great start. Yeah, I mean, I think the veggie pods are great for starting off their seeds. Looking at doing it more with mine. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Idaho says, until I joined YouTube and began watching UK Gardens, I didn't know they were first early, second early, etc. Stores here don't publish that info. I've been researching and found a few excuse me, online that do. It's all, I mean, I think in some ways a potato is a potato, but we have our first earlies, one to get an early crop of potatoes, but also for things like salads. They're not quite our roasted potato, well, some are, not quite our good storage. <laughs> oh, God, hiccups now. Uh, not quite our, our storage potatoes, but at the same point, they are great, good tasting, delicious potatoes. So, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I do like my first earlies. I do like my second earlies. Still harvesting my second earlies at the moment until we get on to the main crops, which are really looking exciting. Uh, learning more about the different varieties. Yeah, indeed. Uh, early is joy. Good evening, Richard and viewers. What a lovely Indian summer we are having lately. Are you glad this is happening or wishing an autumn to set in soon as? I quite like these colder evenings, personally. Um, and the colder mornings I really do like. It sort of forces me out of bed um, and kind of motivates me. Plus, it means that uh, I've, obviously I've had the last two weeks off work, but it means when I go back to work, it should be quieter because they're not going to break down as much. So that gives me more time for my real passion of gardening. <laughs> um, yeah, Jenny says bouncy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was talking about bouncy melons. So, and I'm, I mean melons as in the melons that we eat. Um, Digwell says, I'll be chatting with the veggie punk guy again next Sunday at Malvern. Uh, it may not be the same guy. It depends when you last spoke to him. I'll say no more than that. Um, but still worth a chat. Still worth a chat. Brings a tear to your eye. I did service in the army for the big woman, says Oracle, with regards to the uh, the tribute to the, the Queen Elizabeth. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, I never served in the forces, in all honesty. So uh, my hat off to you and those who did. Uh, right. Back to seed saving. I'm just going to have a quick look at my notes and see what we've got ah something i am saving seeds on i don't know if i mentioned this is poppy seeds i used the picture of the poppy seeds that are dried in my greenhouse as the picture for the thumbnail for this live show now these poppy seeds they just popped up i don't I, we used to have some wild garden areas alongside 
or wildflowers alongside our allotment before the road got built. And I think they just, the seeds just came over onto my allotment uh, for these wild plants. So these poppy seeds have just grown on my plot. And I've just, I, I like poppies. I think they look quite pretty and what have you. So I left them and they've created these beautiful um, seed heads now. And so those seed heads, I've, um, once the plant had completely dried out, I've dug those up and popped them into my greenhouse to dry out any further. And then what I'm going to do is just break those seed heads open, pop them, them into a bag, and then scatter those seeds somewhere on my allotment. Not sure where, when, when the times come. Poppies are quite difficult to get germinated. I don't know if anybody has tried growing them, but what I find, poppies grow best on disturbed soil so they just need scattering over the surface and left to do their own thing probably a bit of protection uh from from that but a bit of protection from the birds uh digwell says keith gone uh no sorry not not think not can't i can't think who keith is i'm thinking of neil um there's i can't think of the guy's name who does it now but uh neil is gone um nicholas says lovely tribute to our wonderful departed queen indeed Stuart says all the saved seeds are out to in paper bags and then hung up it by my boiler so they hopefully dry well then i should have loads of free seeds that's what it's all about isn't it we on the podcast this year we've been thinking more and more about this cost of living crisis and something that I'm trying to do and trying to demonstrate is to make our food cheaper. I've been, uh, no doubt if you've heard it, I've been buying some plants from supermarkets or Wilkinson's that are selling off really, really cheap. I mean, I've got, I know some of you guys have done the same, got plants for 30p, fruit bushes for 30p, and even cheaper than that. And seed saving, I see, is just another way of trying to make our food cheaper. Uh, a pack of seeds. Um, I'm trying to think. A lot of these seeds are come free with magazines. Um, so they may not have prices on them. But a pack of seeds is probably two, three quid for something like that. So we're saving money by saving our own seeds. And then it's something that I'm really focusing on this year. So I'm going to have to save some seeds or think about it, aren't I? Uh, Digwell says, I grew Danish flag poppies this year. Spectacular looking flower. I don't know what these ones, these seeds were. They were just, or varieties they were. They just popped up um, naturally. So, yeah, well worth it. Uh, and he goes, ah, oh, I meant Neil. Yeah, Neil's no longer there, um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Shame, I liked Neil from Veggie Pod. I got on very, very well with him. Um... So something also I've been doing, and this is kind of seed saving. I Every year I tend to grow, it's probably the only flowers that I really grow or plant every year because I'm all about edible gardening, but daffodils and tulips, the spring flowering bulbs. And I've actually, what I've been doing, so I buy fresh in every year and the fresh ones go into pots to make the display. So... I always think the fresh ones, they just look a bit better. But the old ones, so last this year's the what flowered ones, uh, I've been experimenting with those. I put, put some in hanging baskets just for a bit of a difference. But also they go into the grass areas. They go into the ground to add a bit of colour as well. And I guess, again, this is about seed saving or bulb saving. So we're getting those bulbs for following years. And again, better and better, I feel. Again, I, I don't know. Anybody else, do you save your spring bulbs or do you throw them in a the garden and that's it? Uh, Nicholas says, Jenny, are, the green, are they greenhouse melons or are they outdoor melons? And Idaho says, I've seen a picture of those Danish flag poppies. Very dramatic. I'm guessing they're red and white. Uh, not, I can't say I've seen them myself again because I tend to focus more on edibles. Although you could say poppy seeds are edible, but I think there's only certain varieties of poppy seeds that are, that are edible. 
I'm going to have to get some edible poppy seeds, aren't I, so we can grow those. Um, has anybody grown any edible poppy seeds that they can share with me? That would be a good one to try out as well. Uh, yeah, so just looking back over my notes, have we covered everything? Have we covered everything? I think we have. Um, anybody has anything to add, then please do share with us. I think this is a good point now to share with you guys what I have been up to over this last week. Now, obviously, I've had this last week off work, and you will hear more about this on the audio podcast tomorrow. So uh, what, we, what we've what we been doing... so. I popped down the allotment on Thursday and spent a good few hours down on the allotment. We, um, I'm trying to remember what I did now. Um, we did a lot of weeding and trimmed the grass areas and got everything looking into a good, good shape. Uh, well, we did the elder tree last year. We dug up some more potatoes, some of the uh, Charlotte potatoes, which we're eating at the moment and go down really, really well. Um, what else have we done? I'm trying to think now. It's got my brain thinking. I, I can't remember what else we did on Elon, but we you'll hear more on the podcast. Back at home here, uh, I've been working on my herb garden, and I've I've mentioned this quite a few times. We've got a couple of sinks that I've now planted up. We've got salad barnet in one. I've got black peppermint in another, and I've got a watering can that I've put a lavender plant in. And this is an old watering can that leaked, and I just couldn't thought it would make a nice addition as a bit of a display and can be moved around so we've been working a lot on our her gum we've also had to cut back our sage and our margarine because they were getting a bit too big but we've what we've done with those herbs is we've tied them up and we've hung them up in the shed to dry in fact i might bring them in here to dry it might be better in here that way we can uh, use those herbs throughout the winter months as well so been doing a lot of that in the veggie pod the basil has started flowering we've been getting a lot of basil out of it uh so we've uprooted the basil and we've sown some parsley into there so it's, it's been a pretty busy time we've also harvested our courgettes and our our tomatoes and i've been making a uh, ratatouille with some of our peppers and chilies and what have you so busy busy time but you hear more about that on the podcast tomorrow uh jenny says that yes they are greenhouse melons i grew mine in a zippy polytunnel but you can grow them under long cloches i uh, have one out in the garden but it's tiny nobody wants tiny melons <laughs> innuendo after innuendo with these melons isn't it i mean <laughs> It's a family show. <laughs> uh, Oracle says, unbelievable, Stuart Jackson. As I've said, you are a very knowledgeable man. The youth of today only knows about Xbox, etc. The job you're doing is showing them life skills. Uh, and Stuart says, my spring bulbs go in the ground still in pots. So when I go over, I lift the whole thing, then dry them for replanting the following year. Being very successful, apart from the tulips, which are never as good in year two. Now, that is very interesting because I did think of this idea. Do you use plastic pots for that, Stuart? Because I did think of burying one plastic pot in the ground, putting my uh, um, spring bulbs into a second pot, and putting that in the ground. So I'd love to know. I'd love to know if that's what you do as well, Stuart. Um, or how, how you go about, or do you just take a plant of your spring bulbs and pot it straight in the ground? Um, I want to know more about that. Um, <laughs> Digwell says, be careful with the melon talk, you'll make a boob. You know what, I think next year we should have a bit of a, a challenge amongst ourselves with who can grow the best melons. Um, and whoever grows the biggest melons can win, I don't know, I will come up with a prize or something. Um, for just for a bit of fun as well. But yeah, who can grow the biggest melons? We'll do that next year. I'm going to have to make a note of that. Uh, I haven't got my, uh, there's my pens. Just so they're always ready. Biggest melons. I'm going to make a note for that. Biggest melons. We'll, make, we'll do that as a bit of a competition next year. A bit of fun with ourselves and make it a bit more interactive. Because I do think we need to be a bit more interactive and uh, a bit more um, for a group. 
Uh, Stuart has come back with, yes, I use plastic pots, three to four in each pot. Then at least I am using the pots again and again. Okay, I like this idea. I'm going to have to look into this a bit more. Um, uh, yeah, like this idea. I'd like, I'd, I'm sort of trying to move away from plastic pots in some way. I do prefer terracotta pots, but they, they are starting to show their age nowadays. I'm going to blast them with a pressure washer soon. Um, but yeah, uh, Jenny says, you're on. My melons have competition. Yep, I want to see who can grow the biggest melons. Uh, biggest melons comp. Run around to get the booby prize. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. We've, got to, we've got to go with this, haven't we? It's, I can see the innuendos just being a, a great, great laugh. Um, and whoever has the smallest melons wins the consolation prize as well. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think that could be fun. Who can grow the biggest melons? We'll do that next year. Um, <laughs> uh, if, if everyone's on board, that is. If everyone's on board, we can do that next year. If I, yeah, I, I'll work it all out in the uh, all the details out because of uh, competition rules and things. But yeah, I like this idea a lot. Uh, right, I've also got. I have got somewhere some photos that have been sent in as well and i think it's a good time now let's have a look at these photos that have been sent in to us so kate who i haven't seen in this chat tonight she's started saving her tomato seeds with all these jars of tomato seeds fermenting as we spoke about earlier uh, this was a week ago she sent me this photo and she's updated it now because she's got the tomatoes drying out the seeds drying out on some um, uh, a kitchen roll, um, which she's actually going to be giving away as Christmas presents by putting them into packets like this, and to complete the gift, they get sent out with labels and a pot. What a lovely idea for Christmas presents. Uh, Jenny's harvested the last of her tomatoes, uh, which I've got to say, that's a good selection of different colours, which look absolutely tasty um this is a, a lovely harvest that she's harvested this week of tomatoes peppers beans just looks delicious doesn't it absolutely delicious uh nicola has also been busy harvesting as well these are summer squashes tomatoes a good collection of plants going on there but she also had a few hidden surprises she didn't realize there were still some cucumbers left on the plant until she discovered um there we go, like that. Uh, this is a photo of the shipyard garner and Ballycillian bonding over some garlic. Always nice to put some faces to the names like this. So that was absolutely lovely to see as well. Uh, Stuart has also harvested tomatoes. Tomato seems to be like the in thing at the moment. Uh, and Janet has recommended this book. It's called The Plant Lover's Backyard Forest Garden. Um, her friend Pippa Chapman has, I think it's Pippa Chapman, has written this book. It looks absolutely quite fascinating. One, a book that I'm going to look to get myself and read. Uh, Kate, another Kate, is after cherry tomato recipe. So if anybody can help her out with that, this is in the Facebook group. Just go and comment on her blog post, on her post about some cherry tomato recipes. You can add links to your YouTube channel or anything like that. I'm perfectly happy for that. Uh, Ian Beddows, I, I've, I haven't seen, I was seeing Beddows watching, did I see him earlier? But he's after some recipes for this McPlant burger seeds. Um, sorry, after seeds for this McPlant burger, because he wants to know how they grow it. Interesting idea as well. So keep posting those photos. You can post them in our Facebook group and I go through and use the uh, photos that I, I select. You can send me a message on social media directly or you can email me richard at the veggrowerpodcast.co.uk and send your photos to me through, excuse me, through that. So, yeah, always good to see some photos as always. Uh, right, let's go back. Back to hot, oh, 
Hargrave Gas is saying, I'm growing melons for the first time this year. How do you tell when they are ripe? Same question, butternut squash. I've got a couple in my plants from a veg grower club seeds. So the butternut squash, um, I'm going to actually be talking about tomorrow. What you're looking for is when the skin is a uniform orange colour and it's nice and when you, you just gently tap it, you can hear it is solid. That's when you generally know it is ready. Uh, if you're trying to save it for winter storage, you want the stem to go a, a brown as well. So unless I would wait a little bit unless you need them. But um, but basically, yeah, look for them to all be a brown colour all over. As for the melons, now, what I usually do is just <laughs> squeeze the melons. Um, and if they're just firm but soft and they smell of melons, you usually know they are ready. That's how I do it. Um, but I'll see if anybody else has any advice on that. Uh, Stuart says, I will do a little video on bulb planting so everyone can see a layer in each bulb. Please do. That would be great. Uh, Bally Celine, great idea. Each week we could have a different crop competition for fun. Just everyone sends in photos of a selected crop. Be like a tiny bitty Melbourne each week. Yeah, we could do that. We could definitely do that. And we could, we'll do sew alongs and things like that to, to add to the competition. So, um, I will have to work all the details out, of course. Uh, Jenny says, the melon will feel ripe and its stems start, start to dry and brown. There you go. Melons will feel ripe and the stem will start to dry and brown. Uh, I, don't know, I entered a Peter Pepper contest. Deadline was September 4th. Results not published yet. My entry was only three inch. I'm sure others will do better. Whether harvested longer ones, fun contest. Um. Yeah, that does sound fun. I do think, you know, we can do more competitions with this. Uh, Digwell says, my ridge cucumbers are only just cropping. They have gone mad in the last few weeks. My ridge cucumbers, all my cucumbers have been a bit of a disaster this year, it's got to be said. Um, I don't know oh, how it's been such a hard year for many, many reasons. But uh, there's always next year is what I say. And next year we'll have the second greenhouse pot up so I can actually start... Um, start um, dedicating an entire greenhouse to cucumbers and melons uh is the shipyard man taken it's joe is the ship shipyard man taken it's joe uh I, I, I think joe is the shipyard man and he's uh asking if he's taken i think that's that's what's going on there uh graham arnold all waiter and squeeze the melons <laughs> yeah yeah um Jenny says, best to support melons, not so much for the way, but I pop mine on the rack when growing to stop any rotten. You want firm melons, growth, no soggy, saggy growth. <laughs> and the melon in your window just get better and better, doesn't it? But yeah, everybody likes a good tasty melon that's not saggy or, or um, soppy or uh, anything like that. And certainly don't want rotten melons. Um, I've seen pictures of people putting melons in bras to support them, which is a, a good idea. Um, although you do get some funny looks. I prefer to use nettings myself. Uh, yeah, I, I can't keep the I can't keep the melon jokes going, but I'm sure you guys will. Yeah, so I I think what I'll do I'll work out a um, seed sowing schedule for future. Um, live streams and i'll either make a video or do it live sowing the seeds so we can all start like a more of our grow alongs to get them going all depends on see if i'm doing something i'm sowing and directly where they are to grow uh, i'll still be on the same day but obviously i can't do that on the live stream very easily so that's why i'm saying i'll start seeds off maybe a video or something um, but yeah, yeah, I think we'll do we'll do that. Move it, do some of those moving forward, won't we? Good idea, good idea there. 
Well, we've got about half an hour to go. If anybody does want to call in, 07307 135 174 is the number. Or alternatively, if you can zap yourself in and appear on the screen, that goes a long way as uh, that will add to the conversation too. I'm just going to remind you, if you're enjoying this live stream, live show, and you're getting something out of it, please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a like. Please do give us a follow or subscribe, depending on which platform you are joining us on. Uh, added to that, if you want to join in next week, we go live at the same time every Sunday at 6. But you get notifications so you know when we go live. Just click the bell or whatever notification, whatever platform you're watching us on, and you will find out more. Uh, and you will get alerted, that is. Uh, Graham has I come up with a question. Has anyone tried growing chard and spillage in a pun in a polytunnel? I'm trying it this year. So good question. Very good question. Question that I usually grow my chard and spillage outside. They do like well, they are a cool weather plant, so they do do okay outside where I am. I'm very, very mild. Chard is really tough. In fact, my child that I'm growing at the moment is over two years old, believe it or not, and it just keeps coming back. And the spinach, you know, that's a cool weather plant. It does like to be somewhere pretty cool. Um, but a polytunnel would help. you just got to be careful it doesn't get too hot because that might encourage the spinach to bolt. Depends where you are in the country. Obviously, up where I am on the south coast, um, we, I mean, our first frost date is until the beginning of november believe it or not and even then it's very very rare we actually get a good hard frost uh, so yeah we get away with it here where i am but you gotta remember i'm in such a quite a warm environment here uh sean o'brien is joined good evening to you hope you are well uh jenny says my melons made their debut on naked garden day as seedlings they were off to a flying start most popular post on instagram <laughs> oh yeah yeah i think the melons do do well on naked garden day and do certainly get a lot of uh traction uh, I've sown my overwintering peas this week. Should I leave them outside or in the greenhouse? Thanks. I've put my overwintering peas outside. Um, I sowed those last weekend, funnily enough. They're, what did I do it this week? No, I did it the other day. That's, yeah, did it this week. They're in the allotment, sown in the ground. I did it on Thursday. That's right. <coughs> um, I will leave mine in the ground. Uh, I might add a bit of EnviroMesh or something just to protect them if the weather gets really, really cold, which is unlikely. But peas are pretty hardy, and if they can get good growth, I can sow them now, they should be okay. Uh, where you are, Stuart, I think you'll be okay because you don't get extremely cold weather, but just keep the EnviroMesh handy just in case. Jenny says, just sowing some chard and spinach in a garden raised bed and some in the polytunnel. Um, yeah, great idea. Great idea indeed. Um, always good to sow chard and spinach. I grew chard in the poly house. It keeps it growing much far. It keeps it growing much faster than outdoors. There you go. So a lot of people are growing it in the polytunnel. Um, it's not something, as I said, not something I done, but I might do it especially with three greenhouses, might as well put it to use. Nicholas says, I didn't even know I had a cucumber plant. Also found one butternut squash on my only surviving out of 30 plants. Um, gotta love butternut squash. I'm a big fan of butternut squash. We've got no pumpkins this year, which is disappointing, but butternut squash, that one plant out there, there's about 10 butternut squashes out there, which are all going to be used. I uh, cannot wait. For those to be used. Uh, Alison O'Brien is joined. Evening all. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Um, and Jenny says, oh my goodness, Nicola, did the heat finish the plants off? I think the heat this year has been a big problem for many plants. And like I say, my cucumber plants, I've still got them. They're still out there. They're just tiny. They've not flowered. They've not produced many cucumbers at all. And they're not looking great. So I don't think it'll be long before they are composted as we all tend to do it is what are we middle of oct middle of september now and 
now's the time we can start planting out our garlic and our onions really isn't it i always feel this is the beginning of the um the new growing year i've said this many times for me the growing year starts around now because it's when we're starting to get our garlic and our onions and we're preparing for the following year so i always feel it begins now um i've been sowing as no doubt many of you will know a lot more green manures um especially on the allotment my methods of how i garden now is that i in order to keep the weeds down if a we if a bed is empty i grow green manures to have something growing in there if i can't if i've got produce in there i try and mulch but also try and hoe as much as possible as well uh, and no dig of course that's my method of trying to tackle the weeds which seems to be working we're definitely getting somewhere with all these weeds that we have on the allotment the mulch particularly and the green manures in unison seem to be working really really well and that's something else i'm sowing a lot more of and probably will be sowing or trying to save seeds from thinking about it green manures um facilia is one of my favorites because it gets so big and uh, so quick to grow it just shades out a lot of the other plants as well as field beans although the field beans that i've grown on the allotment are a little bit uh patchy with their germination so i've got to sow some more field beans um what other what other green manures have we done we've done the autumn winter mixes which are mostly brassicas they've done well as well again help suppress the weeds and add uh, organic matter to those um, organic matter to the ground which is what I'm really looking for and more composting material uh, Nicola says it was slugs and snails that killed off her butternut squashes and Jenny says little buggers do you have a pond nearby for hedgehogs um, and Nicola goes on to say there's been a light frost in London that I heard on YouTube videos I heard I've heard funny it's I have heard there's people out there who have had their first frost already, which seems for me a little early, but with how cold it has just dropped the last couple of days, it's not surprising. But again, I come back to the fact that not so much where I am because I'm 10 minutes from the sea, so we get a warming effect from the sea, so we don't really get a frost. But our first frost date isn't until November, so for a good couple more months. But even then, I reckon we could get into December some years before we get a real hard frost, and if that is lucky. Uh, Alison O'Brien says, "Hope you like pick. Hope you like my pick of one of my guinea pigs." Um, I is that posted in the group? If, uh, but yeah, always good to see guinea pigs as well. I think they're great. The gun, the manure for guinea pigs is meant to be a really good one to use because it's a cool manure so it can go straight on the plants plus you get all that bedding material as well which is just a good thing to add to your uh, our allotments our, our composting just like the chickens uh, digwa goes on to say frost dates are only a best guess i wouldn't even say best guess they're an average based on previous history so they only really give you a, a bit like predicting the weather isn't it they can only go on um what's happened in the past and work it out um it's not unheard of for us to get a frost so i think it was last year we had a very late frost which killed was it last year 2021 i think it was a very late frost which killed off a lot of plants we had a weird spring and in a uh, last frost uh, graham says i noticed my january king cabbages are forming large heads already i'm hoping they will keep okay as wanted them for winter keep a close eye on them if they start to bolt then you know you've got a problem but they will grow slower so you probably will be okay graham but just keep a close eye on them. Um, that would be my advice. That would be my advice with those. That seem a little bit early to form large heads, though. But has been a bit of good weather up until this week, hasn't it? Uh, 
Nicholas says she has got a pond, but I need to do a few hunts and feed to the chicken and ducks. Yeah, good idea. Go on nightly hunts for those slugs and snails and feed them to your chickens and ducks and try and get those numbers down. Uh, I've got to say, the grazer stuff that I've been testing, the G2 slug and snail, seems to be working, although uh, we are getting problems with some other pests. We had a frost this week, so keep your eye on the temperature over the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the weather apps on our, um, our, our phones these days are great for that sort of thing. I believe you can set an alert to warn you if you're going to get a frost. I'm hearing a bird tweeting outside. It just distracted me. Last When I came out here earlier, I could really hear the birds just tweeting around. Um, partly because Roxy's indoors. Uh, interesting fact. A year ago, tomorrow, I was doing a live show. And uh, that was when you first met, and the day we picked up Roxy, we've had her for a year, believe it or not. Um, for those that don't know, Roxy is my my uh, puppy, who's just over a year old now. Um, it's been a lot of work, but she's so worth it. Um, but yeah, a year ago today, believe it or not, I had that dog there, that wrinkly face I showed you all, um, and now I can't even, I can pick her up, but she's she quite heavy. 20 kilos nearly. Amazing. Amazing how fast these things grow. Uh, da, 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 just check over my notes. Uh, I've told you about the watering can. So I think I've covered everything that I have in my notes. Um, trying to think. Trying to think. So then seed saving. Are we, we Let's summarise the seed saving. So that was what we were mostly talking about. I get the impression that a lot of people are looking at saving seeds more in order to keep a supply going, especially with Northern Ireland and the troubles that they've had. So, as I said, I don't normally save seeds because that box is full of seeds. Uh, that box is full of seeds. And then I've got more and more. I've got, like, so many seeds. I just feel trying to add more and more to it. It's just going to take up much more space um and i'm, I'm tr not trying to be minimalist but i just got to the point that i feel too many seeds just takes over and doesn't allow me the room that i need and it's easy to get lost so i'm not i haven't been saving so many seeds but, but talking to you guys tonight i'm thinking about it again chili seeds pepper seeds i want to save um uh, butternut squash seeds I will be saving for my butternut squash plant. Um, tomato seeds I won't be, but I might do in future years. I have to get some heritage tomatoes. Melons we're going to try next year because I want to save some melons. Um, but, yeah, um, well, what we're looking for is the seeds that are easy to save are the Pumpkins, the squash plants, the beans and peas, very easy to save. Tomatoes, a bit more work involved because you've got to get rid of that gelatinous stuff. Chilies are easy to, and peppers are easy to save. Um, melons are easy to save. Potatoes, and this is an interesting one because I've never thought really of saving seed potatoes, but Dig Grill shared with us how to do it. Basically, you wrap the potatoes in tissue paper, still with the dirt on them and pop them in a fridge between two to five degrees and they will keep for up to a year which is what i'm going to try next year and try and grow some of those from seed from saved seed and if it works i'll come back and report it all back to you uh, to dry most so most of the seeds we wait until the pods are dry or we scoop the seeds out some like tomatoes need fermenting um and then it's all down to saving. But we need to save them. Some, well, they need to be completely dry when they are saved. They need to go somewhere cool and dry to be stored ready for next year. Uh, so Nicola's just said, your phone is going to answer machine. It shouldn't be. It is turned on uh, and it's on. So it should be, should be there. I, I don't know what's happened there. Uh, Turbo Stream is back. Did I miss anything after my phone rang? I don't know. Where did you disappear from? Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? 
Alison O'Brien says, it's a strange world we are living in. What is normal indeed? If but if the world was normal, it would be a boring place, is what I have to say to that. Uh, Stuart, I think I will save some chili seeds as I have around 25 fruits on one plant. What's next week's subject? Thanks. So next week, I want to ask, I'm asking the question, why do you grow your own food? I want to know what it is about it that you do. So that's next week, uh, just to get yourselves prepared. Nicholas says, my pear tree has flowers on it as well as fruit. It's a bit confused. It's the change in weather has caused that at all. We had, talking of pear trees, somebody on our Facebook group for our allotment sites um, has reported that they've had all their pears stolen off their tree. They weren't happy and they're giving up their allotment, which is a shame. But at the same point, just goes to show how much people rely on these things as well. So bloody thieves are a nightmare when these sort of things happen. Um, but yeah, um, what I want to know in these final few minutes as we finish off, has tonight's show inspired you to save any seeds? And if so, what seeds are you going to be saving for your plants as we uh, head into autumn? I mean, pretty much autumn is here, but I want to know what seeds you're going to be saving and why, just to finish this show off uh, for today. And hopefully, has it inspired you to save some seeds? It's certainly given me more, more to think about because I wasn't going to, and now I'm thinking definitely the butternut squash, the potatoes potentially, a uh, lot more things that I think I want to save the seeds from. So please do share with me that as well. Um, we've got about 13 minutes to go. The phone is open, 07307135174. So it should be working. And if you want to zap in, the link is going up in the comments right now. Unless you're in the Facebook group, of course, because it doesn't necessarily go to there, which, uh, yeah, I can see there's somebody watching in the Facebook group. Uh, I mentioned, I don't know if anybody's, I'm sure you've all listened to this week's podcast, but I mentioned this book in this podcast, My Tiny Kitchen Garden. And this has been a really good book, it's got to be said. Um, it wasn't anything new, but as you know, I've built this patio garden this year. And I just found this book. I read it in an hour, so it's quite small. But I found this book to give me more thinking about it and i'm I've, like the, the sorry the balcony garden particularly next year the balcony garden is going to come back bigger and better bigger but more productive than ever it's done really well this year but i feel we can do more idaho says digwell inspired me to save seed potatoes it inspired me to save seed potatoes as well so uh digwell well done on that that's really great and uh something i'm sure we will be trying as well anybody else has this inspired you to save any more seeds and what are you saving uh, yeah so this is a book i mentioned it on the podcast um it sort of inspired me to really go about it but i did have some negative points in that there was nothing really apart from that which is uh, i don't know if you can see a tying a macrame a way to tie rope up to hold pots. That was the only thing that I felt was a little bit different. I'd never seen before and thought, I'll give it a try. Stuart says, I will be saving as many seeds as possible. The more I save, the less money I will spend, which in turn, I will make more money for charity. Good point. Very good point indeed. Um, Bristol Veggie Beds has joined. Hey, lovely to see you. Squash seeds. I'm going to say, <coughs> excuse me, squash seeds. I'm going to say from the back garden as there is no other squash plants anywhere near. So no cross pollination. Good point there. That's a good point. Same with my butternut squash. There's no other, apart from courgettes, there's no other squash plants so to cause cross pollination, which is always a risk with many squash plants. Um, but yeah. Uh, I enjoy trying to save seeds, but the lavender, etc., from the cuttings for companion planting saves me a small fortune. Um, I enjoy trying to save. Yeah, I mean, cuttings is always a good idea as well. And uh, that's probably something we're going to have to talk about another time. Uh, and Nicholas says she rung it 10 times. 
I'm looking at it right now, and hang on, let's just see. I wonder if it's try now, try now, just in case there was something going on. It's it's not diverted or anything, but I will check the phone when I finish because that should be working. Shouldn't be any problems. Anyone else tried ringing in today and not being able to get through? Uh, I haven't got anything. Uh, I, I'm using my phone for the uh, uh, modem, so I can't test that very easily. I'm going to sit by here and wait and see what happens. But yeah, back, back to this tiny, tiny kitchen garden. You know, I did enjoy reading this book and it did give me inspiration more than anything. But there was just nothing I felt in this book that jumped out and made me feel like, yeah, we can uh, really go and do this. We can. Um, we, 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 nothing really different, which is what I'm often looking for in books. And this could be because I've been gardening for so many years now that I just don't find anything that different. I'm sure fashions come around and go. and We've seen it all before many times. So, in that regard, there was nothing new is what I'm saying. And I'm always looking for something new, something to really jump out at me. And it, it's getting harder and harder. Old age, isn't it? Old age, as they say. Um, still no phone call coming through. Uh, Dad says, Emma's just rang your, Margaret's just rang my number and nothing happened. What's going on? What's going on? Um, that should be working. Let me see. It's a pay by, pay by phone, so I can't actually see if anything is working on it. Uh, no idea. No idea. Stuart Jackson says, a good book is The Thrifty Garden by Alice Fowler. I like the idea of that book, actually. That's another one I'm going to have to add to the list. I know that the book I pointed out earlier is really up there. Um, it rings her end, but not mine. Is she ringing the show number, not my personal number? No, no, that's weird. Why isn't anything happening? Uh, don't tell me we've been doing this show and people have been trying to ring in. And it hasn't been working. That's really annoying. Anyway, well, we, we're coming up to the end. We've got seven minutes to go. We'll let's see what happens. Uh, Nicola, I picked up seven crates in the week. Three metres long. We'll make planters out of them. Can you share photos of that, please? Because I'd like to see what these crates are all about. Three metres long. That's a fair size as well. Um I do. I'm looking for new things to grow in at the moment as well. Uh, was the show number? And Margaret says it rings my end, but not your end. No, it's nothing even coming up. So weird. I'll have to call it when I finish this show and see what happens. Oh seven three oh seven one three five one seven four. It should work. It should work. And it's the uh, network have decided that I've never put credit on that phone. I've just used it for incoming calls. And that's the uh, uh, phone company have decided I've got to put credit on it, which ain't going to be a problem. I can do that easy. But you would have thought it would still ring and let me know. I don't know. Gonna... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, finally, Richard. It's worked. Somebody's got through. Yeah. Yeah, God knows what's going on with it. How are you doing? Yeah, not so bad. It's been absolutely glorious weather in Cornwall today. I had to strip off down to my T-shirt and still was too hot. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been warm here. Yesterday was very warm as well. But just finding that at the moment, the mornings and the evenings are just nice and cool. Yeah, it's nice to be able to actually have a duvet on your bed rather than just a sheet or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, are you saving any seeds this year? Well, I did my broad bean sort of, and I forgot to put them in the house, and then mouse seeds got them, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, 
I haven't really grown a lot this year. I think I will be doing some tomatoes. All my tomatoes failed this year and I got all my plants as little seedlings from a lady down in the village who had an allotment. And she said, these came up in my polytunnel. They could be this or they could be that. So some of them I really like, like the black cherry ones that are finally starting to turn orange. They've taken forever to go ripe. But I'm going to have a go at saving some of those seeds because they've got a very unusual flavour. It's not a tomato flavour that I'm used to. Right. So even though they're a nightmare to grow because they seem to take longer to ripen than the orange or yellow tomatoes, yeah. um, I just like the flavour. Um, but I think that's about it this year. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. I've, I've not done as much gardening as I hoped to. My ankles have been playing up, just yeah. not been in the right headspace. Um, but I was out there today starting doing some extra raised bed, uh, veg beds, which I made and painted up. Oh, must have been a month ago, but I had to start. Yeah. Are you there? For about, oh, I don't know, four or five inches and then topping it up with compost and manure and all that good stuff. Yeah, because it's a double height pallet collar, so they'll drop quite dramatically over the next few. Oh, you broke up there. Um, I watch Steve Seaside and Kitchen Allotment. Yeah, thing, and he does a lot of field beans, which he then he he does them, but he doesn't. Put... Oh, she's gone again, isn't she? She's dripping in and out. Are you there? Are you there, Nicola? Yeah. Oh, you dro dropped out again there. Oh, sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Did you hear about uh, Steve from Seaside Kitchen Allotment and whatever channel? You said field he beans. Does field beans for spinach type alternative. Oh, interesting. I, I had somebody mention that. Was it last week or the week before? So I've, I've got to check that out. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Richard, I'll two block because my phone seems to be having problems and maybe we'll have more luck next week. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on with my phone as well. So thank you so much for calling in. Um, and that brings us up to the end of the show anyway. So thank you. I think she's gone again. Yeah, she's gone. She's gone. So just quickly, uh, Adrian says, is it on mute? No, because I can see it out of the corner of my eye as well. And Jenny says, my favourite planters this year are Nutley's Hanging Bags. They are mint for strawberries, but I grew tomatoes and nasturtium in them. Coir and compost mix will do the same next year on the fence posts. Uh, good, good idea, good idea. I mean, I'm definitely looking at small garden growing in my balcony garden as i call it um, as well as all the other stuff just because i've just really enjoyed growing in the balcony garden this year uh right we're going to close this up some networks ask you to make one call a month on pay as you go i've had that phone going since we started this live show so i don't know what it's uh, what is that uh, adrian says bye richard and all bally Cillian says great show as usual good night all indeed it has been a great show and i'm uh, sorry, we have to leave. But next week, I want to know, why do you grow your own? What is it about grow your own that makes you want to grow your own? Um, so get your thoughts worked out for that and join in the conversation next Sunday at six. On the audio podcast, it goes out tomorrow. It will be out at a normal time. I'm not recording or anything tomorrow, tomorrow though, as with respect to the Queen. Um, but that's going out. And in that, we've got um, perennial plants that can be grown in the autumn and how to tell when the butternut squashes or pumpkins or how to store those for the winter. And hopefully I'll get a video out again this week. Got getting on track with that. So yeah, all good fun. Right. I think that is it. I just haven't set myself up ready to go. But uh, yeah. Right, just to finish off, Anna Jones says, great show as always. Bye, everyone. Uh, Graham Arnold says, cheers all. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, thanks for another great live. See you all next week. Idaho Garden Gal says, another great live stream. Uh, Alison O'Brien, it pots a thumbs up, so she's enjoyed it as well. Um, 
Jenny says, thank you for a great show. Had a good laugh. Uh, yeah, all about your melons. It made everyone laugh. Um, anyway, that's enough of that innuendo. Uh, we'll keep it going. All right, you take care, guys. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>